Are you tired of driving your kids to Gigi Allen's grave only to be unable to find the grave because some dick stole the headstone? Well, there is a solution. The Find Gigi Allen's Grave app for Android will give you door-to-grave directions. The Find Gigi Allen's Grave app uses advanced GPS protocols to guide you with voices to the exact patch of dust and grass where Gigi took his final dirt nap. Bring the kids. Do some needle drops at the gigi place on Earth. Gigi always had a huge underground following, but it's even bigger now that he's literally underground. So it's no surprise that lots of folks today take a pilgrimage to Gigi's grave. But getting there wasn't easy, until this app. Forget Graceland, forget the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Those are plastic places for old people with jobs. Hell, even CBGB's is gone, and that former hallowed ground is now a yuppie coffee bar. The real rock and roll mecca is an unmarked patch of grass in Littleton, New Hampshire. And our free app will show you how to get there. Get the Find Gigi Allen's Grave app today. Even if you're not planning to go there soon, the app is fun. The Find Gigi Allen's Grave app is covered by the Bipcot No Government License. And it's from the good people at Beast Lick Internet Policy Commission Outreach Team, who also brought you Fiend Phone, the Freedom Fiends Radio app, Bipcot, Meow Bit, and of course, Truth, Justice, American Way. The Find G.G. Allen's Grave app is free. Get it today on the Google Play Store or on Amazon. Your family will thank you. And don't forget to rate and review. Worms, eating G.G. Allen's face. Are you tired of going to Liberty events only to meet higher fees and diminishing attendance? Is it troubling that your banners have to be approved by the Libertarian Central Planners? Are you tired of seeing your friends physically removed because they said something edgy? Hey, that's none of my business. Then you should check out the Jackalope Freedom Festival night event at Baca Menos in the cooler part of Northern Arizona. Meet Liberty activists, listen to talks, have a beer with Hobby, score some free Freedom Fiends merchandise, camp under the stars, and fight the state with delicious Navajo tacos. And the best part is, is that there's no fees or libertarian general scrutinizers. Check out JackalopeFreedomFestival.com for more information and directions. Runs from August 1st through 8th. That's JackalopeFreedomFestival.com. The Lowbirds, that's our word, brought to you by Bipcot and Discord, not Fiend Fong. We'll get into that in just a second. I'm here with Matt Pritchard. Long time. You actually lost lost the vote on Twitter to see who was going to be the next person on the Lowbirds. You and savages. <laughs> but you won because the super delegates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And our, our emails <laughs> didn't get hacked, so there's no evidence for it. Oh, we just admitted it. Oh, well, anyways. Um. <laughs> so how have, you, how have you been? You got a thing to catch up on? Oh man, yeah, I'm just busy. Uh, we uh, would have, I don't know. I guess this isn't live, so it doesn't matter. It's not like we're late <laughs> to the audience, but uh, literally everything that could go wrong with my audio setup went wrong in Windows. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> well, you, but yeah, I'm good. I'm thing, good. Yeah, things were going uh, terrible for me too because, like, once. Once you were connected, it started shitting out. Like, Fiend Phone started dying on me. So, I'm going to go meet Derek Slopey in person. <laughs> Maybe he can show me what I'm doing wrong. Um, he's the guy who helped create Fiend Phone, which is a wonderful program. But, which is kind of good because I wanted to do, uh, like, kind of like a tutorial on how to use Discord for people who couldn't master Fiend Phone. Because there is kind of a learning curve for that. If you don't know how to go into your IP or your, your router settings and, you know, all that stuff. Discord, you could just set it up, ready to go. It took you like how long to set uh, this up? I mean, less than five minutes, probably like two or three minutes. Yeah, and you're on Linux, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's that's why we're using Discord. Normally, we like Fiend Phone, but um, yeah, Discord's Discord's a neat program. Um, I have, to, I have to add you to the AndCap Discord server, by the way. Uh, okay. So there's been so much stuff <laughs> that's been going on. Um, oh, I know. It's been, I mean, it's been literally months since the last time we were, uh, we were able to record. Uh, yeah. My computer to took a shit. And so now we're on this yeah. thing, which is kind of the reason why we're using when, and one of the reasons why we're using discord. Yeah. Um, I kind of forced my computer to take a shit the other day. Uh, 
So I, I, I had to install a new version of Windows and then that nuked my bootloader so I couldn't get into Linux anymore and I had to reinstall Linux. It was just, all, it was a disaster. <laughs> I bought this computer seven years ago, and in the meantime, like a bunch of my friends have gone through like four or five different computers. I'm mm -hmm. still able to play most of the games I like to play on it, which, you know, yeah. I'm not a big gamer. So, but even still, that just shows you like how well I did shopping seven years ago. Yeah. I don't understand yeah, you, you people. It last for a long time. Yeah. I don't, I, I, just, I just, I'm just smart about it. And I'm like, oh, I don't understand. Oh, I know what this is. This is not a JPEG because it ends with EXE. I'm not going to run it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> some people just don't understand that there was a, a zeitgeister who used to like fight me on the internet all the time and he used to complain like oh like what is it um technological uh what is it <laughs> or like what's the term that they use to describe like when technology purposely takes a crap so you have to keep buying stuff oh Tec uh planned obsolescence Plastop he was like oh planned obsolescence got me again i'm like dude this is your fourth computer since i've known you and I'm still on the same computer. <laughs> like, yeah, what's going on? He took a screenshot of his of his computer, and it was just like there was like eight different toolbars. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh my now god. We know why. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I remember there was a, a couple of years ago. Actually, this was maybe a year ago. I got this like really ominous sounding email uh, that <laughs> was like for like a court appearance that I needed to make in California. Uh, like it was completely ridiculous. Uh, I mean, I, I pretty much immediately knew it was fake, but then it was like, uh, see the, the documents attached. And it was like, I don't, I don't remember what it was. It, it was, it was a JavaScript file though. Like it was not like, you know, a PDF or a word document. I was like, I'm not opening this. And then I, so I went through and I, I, uh, looked up, you know, the, the company that this, uh, this email had been sent through and like, I called them and, uh, told them about this. I was like, yeah, this person emailed me from your company. And, and they were like, what like who who is this like someone was just routing email th through their servers uh taking advantage of their domain name to sound official <laughs> oh that's fun <laughs> yeah so don't open stupid attachments don't click on don't <laughs> yeah you know, don't complete nine offers to get your free ipad on <laughs> yeah like it's it's kind of like that anarchy ball joke, uh, like where this is like you know capitalism has crashed. Would you like to reinstall a new system? <laughs> it's like yeah. maybe if you didn't, <laughs> didn't click on the offers for free iPads, he would be okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, so I'm going to Jackfest now. I have okay. I've been to one libertarian event, and that was a couple weeks ago at Freedom Fest, but. It was mild because it was mostly a bunch of Republicans and some some libertarians. Kind of like I thought this was liberty. Uh, right, right. So that was kind of like my kind of like sticking my toe in to the shallow end and seeing how things. But Jack Fest, what I understand is like pork fest on crack. Uh, every, <laughs> from that what, should be interesting. A person <laughs> who will probably not want to be named <laughs> has warned me like Jack Fest is wonderful and fun, but beware. Everybody there is a conspiracy theorist and into UFOs and Sasquatch that's, and all that stuff. Oh, that's that's even better than Porkfest. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I, I could. I, he's like, you're probably going to be one of the few sane people there. <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, I don't care. It sounds like it's going to be a bunch of fun anyway. Um, so what should I expect? Being that you have some experience in this that I don't. Um. Well, I mean, that sounds a little more insane than Porkfest. Uh. There are going to like basically what, what they warned you about. There's going to be a shitload of hippies there uh, and a shitload of like, Meathead you know, hippies. let's right. yeah. Like okay. let's, let's all make, you know, homemade pesto and trade it for Bitcoin and that will end the state. Uh, you know, like just uh, it. it oh my God. I, there's so many stories that I have from, from pork fest of like, uh, who are those people? Oh my God. I can't remember that is cat Bleich. Uh, they're like the the they have some like commune or farm in Texas, and they did mm -hmm. a reality show about it. I think that never got picked up. Um, terrible I thought, people. I thought you were talking and, about doomsday preppers. <laughs> no, well, they sort of. Except I'm, yeah. that like they're trying to like get completely off the grid uh, and not depend on. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Like not depend on uh, on anyone but themselves. Be like self sufficient. But the way in which they're doing this was they were constantly like asking for donations, 
and things so that they could <laughs> you know please donate become self yeah 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 exactly being self reliant please give us money <laughs> 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 please donate like <laughs> uh, yeah I mean Porkfest was cool the year I went like I I really did have a lot of fun uh, but it was mostly because I was hanging out with my friends and I got to meet and speak with uh, some of the cool intellectuals in in the liberty movement in uh, air quotes um but and like the food was awesome uh like you could get like these it was like a hero basically but instead of pita bread it was bacon uh, oh, so it was just fuck. meat <laughs> like it's called a train wreck uh it was amazing um i think a lot of that stuff was gone not not just from this year but last year yeah. as well, even even when they had their biggest attendance numbers, like a lot of that stuff was gone, and it was most yeah. it was mostly just because people just the people who were doing that just were like, I'm tired of cooking. Um, yeah, it's and it's also I think like part of it is the excuse me the uh, people who organize it. It changes every year because it's like a Herculean task to to organize this event. It takes all fucking year to do it. Mm. And it's such a, a huge level of stress that if you don't have someone who's kind of a rock star and has kind of a good vision of what pork best should be, uh, then, oh, please tell me. Okay. I thought it just logged me out of my computer for a second. Um, then it can kind of suck. Like I heard the last two years, it was basically just like a bunch of do it yourself, hippie bullshit. Like well, not really any, like no interesting talks. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. I cut you off. Oh no, 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 no. I was, I was going to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, no, what I heard from the year previous was probably like their best year. And they had like a mm -hmm. bunch of really great talks and they had like a bunch of different vendors. The food was a little bit meh, but everybody was saying that it was like the best year ever. Even the attendance was the highest ever. But it was this oh, wow. year that everything fell off and a lot of people were boycotting it. Um, a lot of people weren't. <laughs> yeah. A lot of vendors were just not having any of it. And it was kind of twofold. Like the one, the one thing that was getting everybody upset was, uh, well, the 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 minor thing was like the Koch brothers and C4SS was having a little bit more role in organizing the event and funding the event. And yeah, that sounds uh, terrible. <laughs> yeah, and, as, and you know, like everybody shits on the Co the Koch brothers, and they have every right to reason and every reason to do that. That's great. You know, there's there's some 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 positives to that. At the same time, it's not all oh, yeah, bad. No. No, the, the Koch brothers do a lot of good. They, they, I mean, and the stuff that they get criticized for by most people is not the stuff that they should be criticized for. Yeah. <laughs> but there's some like libertarian critiques of them. Like they kind of, yeah. they kind of water it down a lot. Kind of, the, they kind of Gary Johnson everything. I guess that's the right absolutely, word. yeah, absolutely. Um, but at the same time, you know, the Gary Johnson type is what kind of got me into libertarianism. You know, it's it, Ron Paul was 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 amazing you know he did he you know he yeah. brought a lot of people in he also brought a lot of retards in and i'm sure you'll attest to that yeah um, oh yeah 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 but you know it, most people who got into libertarianism kind of got in through pendulette you know um th those type of people where it's kind of like oh i'm kind of left and kind of right at the same time you know and it kind of yeah. like, oh that's interesting i never heard of that before and then you're gonna get some deeper uh, reading yeah um I, the thing is, like, I really don't want a bigger tent at this point. Like, I don't want more libertarians <laughs> simply because of what you just said. We got, like, Ron Paul brought in. Uh, he did bring in a lot of really cool, like, a lot of really good people. I was one of them, obviously, because I'm super awesome. Well, uh, okay. But, okay. We'll debate that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> like, I, I don't want more truthers. I don't want more, you know, I, I don't want more Gary Johnson types. Like, I just, I want people who are going to be consistent and think clearly and either not, not, not be so idiotic uh, as to, you know, be like a full truther and, and everything like that, but also not sell out like the, not like the Johnson types. I want, you know, I, I just want people like Tom Woods, you know, <laughs> I want more Tom Woods more Michael humors, Brian Kaplan's like smart people who can articulate the ideas. Cause it is the ideas that attract people in my opinion and that's why ron paul was so attractive was he he kind of um you know his hair is beautiful and i got lost in his eyes at, no i'm just I, <laughs> no his uh his consistency with the ideas was what uh really spoke to me you know it was an actual like radical alternative to the the left and the right as opposed to you know something that was just like oh just slightly different yeah um, 
And, you know, if we, we might get more mongoloids like you who, you know, were attracted by Gary Johnson or, you know, but that's, <laughs> I, I uh, guess we'll, we, we'll have to put up with it. <laughs> well, see, I, you got to remember that I came from the Green Party and I was watching Penn and Teller bullshit. Uh, it just yeah. because I was totally paying for satellite TV out of my pocket. I was clearly not uh -huh. pirating it. Um, and there was a show on on Showtime, which I was also sh clearly paying for, uh, called Bullshit. And I was like, oh, Penn and Teller. I love Penn and Teller. I've been like a big fan of Penn yeah. and Teller since I was a little kid, but I've only been interested in their magic. I've never, well, I've had a book, but it didn't really go into politics. The Playing in Traffic book, which is a good book. Yeah. It's got a lot of cool tricks in it. Um, but, you know, they had the show and it w they were talking about, uh, I think it was um, the Bible. They that was the first episode I saw. And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is neat. And then, like, the next episode, it was about PETA. And I was like, well, PETA's cool, right? Why yeah. would you bash PETA? <laughs> like, you were just bashing the Bible. <laughs> Clearly, you guys are liberals, I'm, you know, because yeah. there's only two options. <laughs> and then it was like, oh, wow. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Everything else is fine. What's the next episode? Oh, okay. So yeah. It was another episode that I agreed with. And yeah. I was like, okay. And then the next episode was something I it was like, gun not a gun control. It was so something like that. And it was like yeah. every other episode I agreed with, and then yeah. but but it like I couldn't disagree with the other ones because it was like man you, you really hit it like that's yeah. yeah yeah um you know and it takes something like that it takes like a Gary Johnson for something like that and it's yeah but I think the real reason why Ron Paul attracted the Mongoloids was not Ron Paul I can't really fault him for that I think that was really like the conspiracy theories people the crowd were like oh he mentioned the federal reserve let's all cling oh, yeah, on yeah. to that and then that well, well i know that's that's the kind of thing because it was like while you also had like the the mises institute uh you know had all of these incredible classics online for free and so they really laid the groundwork for uh people who were interested in like economics and ideas uh they laid the groundwork for them to just have these resources to learn at the same time in parallel you had the conspiracy theorists who are talking about the fed and about, you know, lizard people and UFOs and, and all of this stuff <laughs> that had that ready for anyone who might be questioning, you know, the official narrative of nine 11. It was like, they had their own equivalent of the Mises Institute for craziness. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, I, I would agree with that. I can't, I can't blame Ron Paul for that. He he's, that was, you the to him, he's, that was the, yeah, exactly, the coast to coast. Exactly. It was them. They're exactly. The and, you. And they and there's there is some overlap between the, those crowds and and libertarians. I mean, there it's, there's like a, a little Venn diagram action going on there. But um, but yeah, I, I can't blame Ron Paul specifically for bringing in the the truthers. Well, the, the good thing is with all that stuff is that they're all kind of gone now. Have you noticed that? Like the really crazy people, they're starting to disappear from liberty. Uh, yeah, I, I think to an extent. Um, and it's the same with people uh, who came in who were like really like they were kind of socialists forever. <laughs> and I called them socialists. Uh, people like an, uh, Antonio Bueller, who's not the perfect example of this, but um, a lot of them have have kind of left as well. They've kind of there's like a big crowd that was kind of just transient through through libertarianism. Yeah. Um, well, you know, you had the, the. I don't know. I don't really. I don't really talk to very many libertarians outside of like my circle of friends anymore, though, because I, I find many of them very obnoxious and annoying. So this could just be my my internet bubble that I've that I've created for myself. <laughs> See, I, I was there a while ago, and then I started dissing Molyneux, and then Michael Dean took me on the freedom fiends and then now it's like i have to approve them all <laughs> and so i see all yeah. that stuff and then i have like this kind of rule like if you if my feet if i see you start posting stuff about vaccinations or 9 11 and it just keeps happening you're uh -huh. gone i've just unfriend you quietly uh sometimes yeah. like if i think that you're a little bit rational like i've seen you post like the rational it's like okay i'm gonna argue with you for a bit then I'll be like, yeah, you can, you can just follow me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't want to see yeah. you in my feed. Like, I'm, yeah, exactly. I know I can unfollow, but I'd rather have my friendship open for someone else who I, I will like, you know? But yeah. anyways. And that was also like a, a, I don't know, maybe I think it was about two years ago. I did this. Like I, I realized that like I had followed so many like libertarian Facebook pages over the years and they were all just posting garbage, you know? Uh, and some of them used to be good and then went downhill. I went through and I unfollowed like all of them. I think I follow like 
reason and in like meme Can you build meme with pages. Coke brothers. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it was just like I, all of these libertarian publications, like they're just, it's all doom and gloom, kind of nonsense. Uh, some And some of it is complete nonsense, but it's just like it gets irritating and annoying after a while. <laughs> Everything's terrible. Yeah. Or vote for Donald Trump. I know all that stuff that I, I was talking about earlier. You know. So anyways, the other thing, because that was, that was the first thing <laughs> that Porkfest yeah. was uh, yeah. people boycotting it before <laughs> we got off on a tangent. Well, this is the Walbert, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, the first thing was, you know, the Koch brothers and the C4SS taking a bigger role there. The other thing was that Ian got banned from Porkfest. Yeah. Yeah. And I, okay, so like I have a good, like it's not really a nuanced position. I think it's the reasonable position. And I, and mm-hmm. I, for some reason, I always end up in that kind of moderation. And I, I really try not to be that kind of like, oh, well, I'm in the middle. So therefore, I'm right. Like that yeah. appeal to the moderate moderation. But what he said was dumb. And what, what you know, like his, his thing with his 14 year old, whatever girlfriend, that was also dumb. But at the uh-huh. same time, they knew about this for years. She's, oh, I know. She, she was eight. Like she was eighteen. Now they're not even like together anymore. He hasn't really been talking about this at all. Yeah, and it was only until after they got their twenty thousand uh, signers that they were like, "Okay, now we got our coke money. You can go away." Yeah, and don't yeah. bring your LRN <laughs> banners in here either. You're not allowed to display them, even if even if it is the, just the freedom fiends. Yeah, like, you're, you're absolutely right. They, like they 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 knew about it. <laughs> it was not a secret that he was dating a 14 year old girl. Um, and nobody really seemed to care. You're, uh, you're I, right. It was even, I didn't even care. I was just like, well, the parents approve. She approves. He approves. I, That's none <laughs> of my business. Like, yeah. Like, I, I mean, to an extent, I guess, and I don't know what their age of consent is in, in that state or whatever. 16. Uh, yeah. 16. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's, and the age of consent is, you know, it's neither here nor there anyway, but, uh, but, like when I heard that and uh, that like that makes me uncomfortable. Like I, it yeah, really it makes is. me uncomfortable. Adult men or even adult women dating like young teenagers is just fucking creepy. Yeah. <laughs> like there's there's no two ways around it. Uh, and especially the all the stuff that he said uh, on Free Talk Live. Uh, I, like I listened to a bunch of those clips and like it's pretty mind blowing. Um, yeah. In my opinion, the guy needs to go and get some help and, you know, talk with a therapist about being a 10 year old prostitute, um, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that will have an effect on your adult on your adult life. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, he does great work. I'm not I can't say the rest for the, a lot of the Keniacs, but he's probably one of the better of the Keniacs, mm-hmm. I guess. But still, it's it's that's the, one of the things that's just like, ugh, whatever, that's fine. Is as, as as long as everybody's consenting in that, even including the parents, the legal guardians, they're consenting. It's like I just yeah. I mean, uh, do I what know. you want, but I just don't want yeah. to be any part of it. I can I can understand that. I can also see that the Free State Project saying like, hey, you know what? Like, we don't want to associate with you. That's fine. I don't care. But they they they, they waited, and you can tell that oh, they yeah. waited they until they got their did. their twenty thousand signers. And by the way, fuck the Free State Project. Because I signed up when when I originally signed up for the Free State Project, it was under the condition that they could, they did it in a certain amount of time, which that time mm-hmm. had passed. Like if we get twenty thousand signers by this date, then we'll all move. But then that kind of by that date part oh, kind of got yeah, just, <laughs> just vanished. And I'm like, wait, 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 wait. So I'm I wait. Well, hold on. Now you're making me sign something I never signed. Like I didn't sign yeah. up for this. I signed up under the implication that this was going to happen. By this date, otherwise I wouldn't go, and I didn't go. Yeah. And by the way, yeah. I don't like cold. Now that I moved to Kansas for a couple of years and had to deal with living in snow, fuck that. Oh my god, <laughs> I know. It's like it's like New York gets really, really damn cold. New Hampshire is pretty far north of yeah. where I am. <laughs> like I have no desire to ever go there. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Climate before liberty. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, seriously, I'm thinking, though. <laughs> I'm thinking about starting like a free state project here in Vegas. Like we're the warm state project. <laughs> you can go do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Up and, and we <laughs> this time the all the asterisk asterisk actually includes freedom. You know. <laughs> yeah. Like. 
<laughs> freeze your ass off or or burn your ass off you get a choice there's no other <laughs> yeah, there, there's literally you can't you can't go in the middle there. <laughs> yeah. yeah we don't need no we don't need no gary johnson's about temperature so um yeah yeah, so, the Free State Project to me feels like it's just an organization that now is, exists only to further its own existence. Yeah. Like the, it's just like any other, you know, like kind of interest group or like nonprofit or bureaucracy. It's just it's just a self serving piece of garbage that needs to cease to exist. Yeah, <laughs> and it's one of those very few things that Cantwell really pushes that I actually agree with. Fuck. All right, so I owe I anti-war money. All right, anywhere.com money. Okay. Oh, nice yeah, I'm not supposed to say it, but oh well. I'll blank it out. <laughs> Damn what it. happened? <laughs> Anyways, he who cannot be named. Uh, oh, I gotcha, guess, gotcha. I guess, okay. I guess, uh, I guess uh, yeah, that's one of the few things I agree with him on is that, you know, they're, they're a corporation <laughs> and they're, they're becoming their own worst enemy. Um, Absolutely. So yeah, so I have never been to Pork Fest. I was going to plan to go into the Pork Fest and this whole Ian thing happened and I'm like, I'm done. That's it. That, that, that's yeah. that. I mean, like that stuff kind of like making me sign a contract I never signed. I could deal with that because Liberty and now I'm just like, fuck you. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to be any part of this. So yeah. I didn't go. And not only that, but it was like after I, after I heard about this, I was like all that money that I was saving for it. I was like, nope. I'm blowing it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good plan. It's a much better use of your money. <laughs> I, should, I should have saved it, and I would have had money for a computer. But no, yeah. <laughs> now I had to take out a loan for it. Ugh. But whatever. I'm buying credit. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, But I'm going to go into JackFest. And what's great about JackFest is there's no admission fees because it's not even really an event. It's just a bunch of people going like, oh, there's this unknown land up in northern Arizona. Let's all go hang out there this Let's first week. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> and there's vendors that show up and – Apparently, like people like Larkin Rose and Mark Stevens are there, which I know Michael Dean loves. By the way, uh, big uh -huh. fans. He's gonna he's gonna send me hate mail over that. But uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, what's interesting is that like there's some other people that might be there. Michael Shanklin was talking about being there, and but you should you should bring him on the on the show. I am. I'm gonna try to. Uh, <laughs> there's gonna be two Lulber, other Lulberts. Um, the new Lulbert, um, Brandon, Br uh, Baron von Stormhaven. He's going to, he's, uh, we're going to carpool out there. And then I guess Jim Babb is showing up, which that's going to be a whole lot of fun hanging out with Jim Babb. Yeah. And, uh, I was hoping that MK was going to show up, but I guess I, I heard through the wire that she may not come. Bummer. But either mm -hmm. way, uh, I want to do like a Lulberts where I'm just like cycling a mic around. <laughs> people that yeah. hate me <laughs> so we have like larkin rose on like okay you hated me for a while okay M mike shanklin we've, we've been beefing for a while what's up <laughs> we're, we're actually not beefing now but it was interesting because we it was interesting it. for a while yeah yeah yeah, yeah we're, we kind of we've kind of uh we kind of reconciled i guess but anyway, so this is going to be like a first like actual real libertarian event and i really picked the craziest one of all but, um, yeah, it sounds like it. <laughs> but from what I hear, the drugs are great. So not that yeah, I, not I, mean, that I well, do drugs. No, of course drugs not. Drugs are I mean, bad. <laughs> <laughs> we just do them on talk radio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, that's going to be uh, my first deal on that. So I don't know. I was just I just hoping you had some insights and something I should be aware of. And no, I had never even heard so. of Jackfest. I mean, this sounds this sounds like. It actually, it's probably going to be more fun since there will just be crazy people there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if that's and, and you, love, you, you love that stuff. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just, oh, I could, <laughs> I'm like, it would be there not tripping on acid because that's, that's terrible. And talking yeah, to these people. Why would, like, I mean, why would you do something awesome like yeah. that? <laughs> and, and then, you know, arguing with people about 9-11. Like, you really still believe in <laughs> that? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, also in the new. Oh, did you want to talk about Molyneux? Because I know <laughs> everybody wants me to talk about Molyneux. What's is there anything new with him? I, I don't. I stop, I've unfollowed his everything like ages ago because I can't stand him. Okay, so this is developing as of last night. Uh, there's a German guy who ended up finding a uh, a comment on his channel. Someone had left a comment saying like, just kind of like, hey, are you an ant cap or not? 
Like, what the hell are oh, you? Oh, I saw this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and okay, he was I like, I'm what's ever necessary, which is kind of like that whole, like, Bane thing, like, I'm necessary, evil. Like, <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, holy shit. But uh, we went and checked on it later, and it was it was gone. And yeah. it was like, wow. Um, so I guess yeah, I'm I'm awaiting my apology evens. from all of the, the, the Bogosity co-hosts, not Shane himself. Which he's a fuck ass, by the way, but all the other co-hosts who have said like, "Oh, Jim Jesus is crazy for thinking that he's a conservative now." Pfft. Why right, would you think right. that? I don't know. Maybe because of literally everything that comes out of that guy's mouth now. Yeah. Holy fuck! And like, I, I, yeah, I saw that comment, and it was hilarious because the guy asked him like, "Are you like an ethno-nationalist or, uh, or an anarchist?" Yeah. What's, what's I am? What is necessary? You know. <laughs> And yes. well, that's like, a, like Hans Hermann Hoppe has a like what his latest book through the Mises Institute came out like a couple of years ago. It's called What Must Be Done, which is like <laughs> oh, the most shit. ominous title. I've, <laughs> yeah, it's the <laughs> most ominous title I've ever heard. <laughs> Was the subtitle like My Struggle or <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, I know Michael Dean has it as his. I'm gonna find this right now because it's easy to find because it's making the rounds right now. Oh, he changed his profile picture. Are you kidding me? He just had it that. Well, good thing there's this thing called. Oh, he changed it twice today. There we go. So, Stefan, make yourself clear. Are you an anarchist or a nationalist populist? I am. Is I am what is necessary. That really yeah. is the the Bane thing, right? Yeah, I, I'm necessary evil. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh my God. Um, yeah, but he was he, like, uh, there was this German guy. Uh, I'll, I'll hopefully I'm I'm terrible at. I always say like I'm gonna link this in the in the description, and I never do. I should make a note of it. Yeah, may, leave a link. Link for German dude. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, okay. So yeah, I was, I'm just like... making a note for myself so I remember to put this in the show notes. Yeah. There's a German dude um, who's been like kind of compiling clips of Molyneux and stuff. He's kind of doing the true shibes thing a little bit, but a little bit more funny. Uh huh. And he was like showing oh, yeah. clips of Molyneux talking about like, you know, he was like, he was agitating for the German people to, you know, to, to agitate for their government to institute policy. And he was like, the German government will listen to you. Like, you know, they, they, they're receptive to you. They'll understand you and they'll listen to you. And they care about what you have to say. And it's like, <laughs> what the fuck happened to your like, entire philosophy? Like, oh, government doesn't care for you. They don't listen to you. They're not interested in that. Like, you know, everything they do is intentionally d- to harm you. You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's, it's like literally everything the guy says now is at odds with what he's been saying for years and years and years. Uh I'm just, like I still just can't get over his his police bullshit. Uh, like it's it's ridiculous how he is defending the, like all of these sh- police shootings, uh, and like what the, what happened to him? <laughs> like, true, and I never true even liked him, and, and, and me happened? happened to him. That's what happened to him. <laughs> like I'm not trying to toot my own horn, toot toot, but mm-hmm. um, it, true shibes had had been doing. Because cause Molyneux had this little nice little scheme where he would say things and it would get lost into his hours and hours and hours and hours and thousands of hours of podcasts. Right. And you would never be able to find it. And as soon as you say, like, well, Molyneux said X, people would jump on the thing and say, like, oh, t- tell me where. And it's almost impossible to yeah. <laughs> like go and find yeah, like, where exactly he said Yeah, it's too much this. information. Yeah. And it, even if you do, it's going to be like, oh, well, you're taking that out of context. So True Shives had this really nice thing where she was like, okay, well, I'll just take all these clips that I know that he's saying this stuff. And rather than saying that he says this, I'm going to make a video showing the things that he's right. saying and then giving text commentary on top of it. And because he, she was doing that, BuzzFeed picked up on it, wrote an article about it, and actually talked to um, – what's her name? She used to be Liberty Girl, uh, bigger than both of me, um, Colleen. A former inner know. circle member of, of, of the cult, like the, deep inside the cult. Um, mm-hmm. she, and she had helped this BuzzFeed article, uh, BuzzFeed guy write an article and he threatened BuzzFeed with the, with the lawsuit, uh, DMCA true shibes, because that was, that was it. That was the one thing that people couldn't, you know, that he had, he can hide behind was just the, the hours of, of footage that you had to dig through. 
but it yeah. was all there. It was just easily accessible. And anytime you wanted to find something, you said like, Molyneux says X, and he, it would be there, two shibes. Yeah, so. And then uh, after the DMCA thing, he thought, you know, like, oh, no libertarians will pick up on this. <laughs> No, <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. not going to have any of that. I was like, I no, 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 no. I was just criticizing uh, Michael Shanklin about this. It's your turn now. <laughs> you, know, right. like, you know, no one's going to get away. With it. <laughs> you know, and I blew the whistle. Um, yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened to Molyneux. And then all of his kind of libertarians, his real diehard libertarian fans were like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, that was the final straw. Good. <laughs> And so he had to go somewhere to get to fill his donation quota, right? So yeah, exactly. Here's this new emergent emergent group, the alternative right, who has been kind of gaining some popularity, and now they have a presidential candidate who's leading in the polls. Hey, you know this guy sounds pretty interesting. The the only reason they like him is because he says insensitive things about minorities every once in a while. Because he lit like his policies literally are not what they want. Oh, he's very pro-Israel. Very pro-Israel. <laughs> like, the only thing that they like can he, manage is immigration. Really? I thought, oh, because I, I thought he had said something like he, uh, no, like, dude, and you come on, man. If you're, if, if you're, in New, but, yeah. if you're yeah. in New York <laughs> and you're in real estate, you can't be anti-Semitic. You just can't. you got to be very pro what, what are you? What are you implying? <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you implying about, about New York real and estate? And on top of that, his daughter converted to Judaism. Really? <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like this guy is yeah. very in bed with. Well, I'm not not that I, have, I don't have a problem with it. I'm I'm actually perfectly okay with it. It's What's that the, I know well, they're <laughs> not, and they're okay with that. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like pick one, pick yeah. one, P pick my I side, know, but pick one. <laughs> it's it's yeah. literally like it's just because of the, you know he says insensitive things about minorities every once in a while. Yeah. Like he literally nothing he is for is anything that they're generally for um except for like you know uh, build the wall which will never happen it no. like but it's politically it's just <laughs> it's not gonna happen it's not uh, even politically it just you can't build a wall that close to a river like there's international <laughs> treaties that say you can't build within certain distances of rivers because it'll block waterways during flooding yeah. like it's <laughs> <laughs> you just can't yeah, do it. I don't know. So anywhere you can build a wall, there is a fucking wall, you know. And even still, they can climb over it. You build a ten foot wall, you just made you just made you know twelve foot ladder companies lots of money, yeah. you know. And if you build a, a, a hundred feet wall, guess what? You just you just made uh, the shovel company rich. Yeah, exactly. I well, I know, and that's the other thing is it's not going to keep people out. Like, oh god, it's so it's so frustrating. The, the alt-right is just so irritating. I cannot wait until they disappear. <laughs> maybe they won't. Like, yeah, maybe they won't. Like, <laughs> like, they might not disappear. Like, cool, they? like, I, like I'm not, I have no illusions. Like, I'm not just assuming that they're a fad or anything like that, but I hope they are. 4chan? They're really... Think about the 4chan memes that have existed. Ron Paul was a 4chan meme for a while. Yeah. How long did that last? We got we got a good eight years out of that one, maybe. I know. No, no, we I'm got about sharing. four years and they gave up on that one. And then it just I mean, I, I still share Doom Paul memes, so it's <laughs> Yeah, but the Ron oh, Paul man. B thing and it's all gone. Oh yeah. It's all fashy goys and on poll now. Yeah. It was fairly libertarian and then jokingly fascism and they're like, maybe maybe there's something is to this fascism thing. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah, <laughs> Oh my God! So I'm, I'm hoping that this is like when Donald Trump loses, because, and I better not I say know. that because I thought he wasn't going to get the fucking nomination, and he goddamn yeah. did. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah, he he surprised me with that one, uh, and I I don't know, I don't think Hillary really has like, I don't think she has a chance. <laughs> it's like uh, what it's coming down to. No, I'm not. I, like, I, I'm, I'm very. My, my money's very much on Clinton. Go ahead. My the thing is like I, I don't make predictions like this because I'm very I'm wrong a lot. Uh, <laughs> I've been wrong about everything this year. That's that's a big reason why I'm starting to think that Trump might have a, a serious serious chance. But like Clinton is now so especially with what's happened with like the DNC emails and apparently WikiLeaks has even more that are like more damning than what's happening. She's so nakedly transparently crooked. Uh, to use Donald Trump's uh, analysis. You're making me crazy. Like, 
Go ahead. It's it's crooked Hillary is a real thing. Like it's not just a, a, a name that he's throwing around. The Bernie people now are fucking furious because they're you know they're they're finding out that you know all their conspiracy theories about the DNC trying to shut out Bernie were true <laughs> and. Uh, And I think that they're like a lot of them are probably not going to want to vote for Hillary. But the most important thing, but they're not going to vote for Trump. They might. They might do it. Just just they've already done these poll. They've already like polled these people, and it's like Trump gets like four percent of the 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 Bernie vote. Okay, Clinton gets about. This is off the top of my head because I just saw it this morning. It was something around the around the range of forty, which is pretty bad. But yeah, maybe yeah. there'll be a little bit something after the the convention when Bernie like totally cucks for her, um, <laughs> and then the, the, Johnson the, the actually reason, is getting a lot. Yeah, I know it's something like eighteen percent. Yeah, uh, but of course, th- this is the other thing: is what people say they will do versus what, what they, they actually, actually do in do, November. Yeah. Two di- two different things. But my biggest thing, though, is Nader got five percent in the polls. How did that end hmm? up? Oh, three. Was it just 3%? wait until the debate? Yeah. Just wait until the debates because Hillary is not quick on her feet and Trump is Trump. Like that's is where Trump really? thrives is in that. Really? And that's what it, well, yeah, it doesn't. Well, OK, if you were gonna, if you're, you have to decide what metric you're looking at it by, because if you're going by, you know, who's quickest on their feet when it comes to policy, you know, and, and, and debating policy. Yeah, he's terrible. But when it <laughs> but that's not the important metric in a, in a debate. The, the ideas don't matter. What matters is who's controlling the space. Mm-hmm. And what he is good at is being mean. <laughs> Interrupting, like I'm being Interrupting tonight. people. I blame yeah. you. <laughs> and he's, like, he is going, no one's going to be able to, and, and here I'm, I'm copying some of uh, the talk from uh, Michael Malice and Tom Woods, uh, but when, when she goes out there, she's not going to be prepared for him. Her staffers are like just imagine when they do debate prep who's going to end up being Trump opposite I'll do it I'll do it you know yeah. I can do it <laughs> no, you don't work for her <laughs> you don't work for her so you and there's two things at play I will you're going to pay either, me I will they <laughs> they either are afraid of her and you know won't won't go after her in the same ways as Trump during prep or they worship her so much that they they can't conceive of like upsetting her she's not going to be prepared and when he goes out on the stage and points to bill clinton in the audience and says your husband is a rapist and you silenced his victims what like what is she gonna say like she's that's an absurd conspiracy theory i don't know what you're talking about (laughs) <laughs> just like everything else you're saying is absolutely fucking insane. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter if it's insane or not. It, what matters is if he'll say it. <laughs> and but imagine, see, but that gosh, works. Having all these coughing fits and things uh, on TV. Like, just imagine what's going to happen when she starts with <laughs> coughing and he starts digging at her and insulting her, and then and you know saying like, "Look at this woman. She's not well." Like. <laughs> It's going to be incredible. She's sicker than JFK, and frankly, frankly, we know how that ended, but with the bullet. <laughs> frankly, he, he would have died anyway. Frank, I don't know why we're talking about them. <laughs> the debates are going to be fucking biblical. Like, they're, like, I mean, because just remember, he destroyed Jeb Bush and Marco Rubio. Like, Rubio quit politics. Jeb Bush okay. apologized to his mother on Twitter for being such a failure. Like, Trump is going to annihilate her in the debates. Okay, but to be fair, t- Ted Cruz did a lot better. <laughs> did, he I, did. <laughs> Ted Cruz probably beat him, but you just you just can't you just can't. When it comes to Trump supporters, they're they're in it to the end, uh, no matter how wrong it is. You know, like the whole mm-hmm. like Trump came into politics. I mean, like, well, you know, he's been into politics kind of loosely, but he really kind of get into the political dialogue recently because of the whole Barack Obama birther thing. That's how he came into it. Like, oh, show, really? show, yeah. Because, remember that video that went viral for a while was Trump saying, like, Barack Obama, I, frankly, I don't think he was born in the United States. I just want some documentation. If he does it, I'll give him like five billion dollars to it. whatever charity he wants. It could be any charity. Frankly, it's going to be it's going to be tremendous. It's going to be huge. Um mm-hmm. And that was his big thing. 
That's what got him right, into right, the modern right. politics. Okay, I do remember that now that I'm thinking about it. And then after that, it was the, um, like, oh, we're going <laughs> to... The video that followed that was, um, I think, him praising Clinton for, for invading Libya, which he, <laughs> <laughs> which he says, like, oh, it was against it the whole time. I was never for that. Uh, <laughs> like, so it was, oh, my God, I know. And all, this, really all she don't. has to do, and, and uh, if you've noticed these ads that she's been pumping out lately... It's either Donald Trump like cursing in front of kids, or it's um, like oh the the new ad that she was just that I just saw the other day was uh, it was an ad it was like it was supposed to be like oh look Donald Trump endorses me for president <laughs> like look at all these wonderful <laughs> things he's saying about me oh she's a tremendous woman she does great work and she's a great friend of mine Frank yeah and it, it that was the ad like oh look he endorses me for president right <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I, I honestly don't know who's going to be worse. Like, like the thing is, like, the only bad oh, part about this election, the only tell. bad part about this election is that one of these psychopaths is going to win. The, <clears throat> like, it's got, it's, it's, this is the best election ever because it is so fucking funny. I have never had so much entertainment from, uh, I've never seen so many careers destroyed. And that, and that's my favorite part of the election yeah. cycle is just watching these these politicians, you know, get thrown under the bus, get, you know, get ground up into hamburger, like more of that place. And there's going to be more of that between now and November. Um, but I don't know who will be worse once they get elected, because Trump to me is is more frightening because he's more unpredictable. I don't know what he's going to do. But at the same time, if Hillary had had her way two years ago, we'd have troops in Libya. We'd have troops in Syria. We'd probably still have uh far more troops in Iraq than we do now. Like <laughs> there's, there's so much that's obviously bad that she's going to do that. I, I, it's like I start looking at Trump and I'm like, maybe you're not so bad, but that, not that came out wrong. <laughs> you'll, you'll have to edit that. Maybe no, you're I'm not, not as bad as Hillary. <laughs> I don't edit anything. what I meant to say. <laughs> unless, it, unless it's going to make me violate a contract with GCN, I'm not doing it. Or, I know or, I gonna, know or gonna make a co-host break up with his girlfriend. That's like the only yeah. two things that, like, I made a yeah, joke. Yeah, I yeah. made a joke about Seamus Coughlin's girlfriend. It was it was harmless, but he was like, yeah, it's a little tactless. I'm like, okay, I'll take it out. Yeah. And then the other yeah. one was, um, it you know, it was it was harmless. It was just you know, like, oh, you know. Whatever. Anyways, um, I'm not gonna say it because he, he'll get mad. Uh, right. <laughs> but, uh, and then the other thing was like Jim Bab talked about a uh, uh, something that's that may be happening with GCN. So, and I couldn't. Right. I, was like, ah, yeah, I, I already promised I wasn't gonna say anything about that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah no, but I don't, I don't know, know, man. Yeah. But then, but then I started thinking about a Trump presidency, and it's it's like it's chaos <laughs> in my mind. Like, what what are the things he's gonna propose? You know, when you know when international crises erupt how is he going to react like it's just it's a nightmare yeah. the, the the end game of this election is a nightmare scenario no matter what but in the meantime uh get the popcorn yeah. <laughs> like, there's well, not enough popcorn in the world right now <laughs> well think about what happened when when barack obama was running for president and he was promising all these wonderful things to the liberals right he's going to mm -hmm. close getmo and all this stuff and he's going to do all this wonderful stuff and then it was like he got into office. He got some more. He got some more briefings, and then it was, nope, I'm establishment. <laughs> like yeah. he just went right yeah. down the establishment line. Uh, this is what's going to happen to Donald Trump too. Donald Trump's going to be like, he's good. He's in fact his first press briefing is going to be after the the DNC convention. They just announced right. this, that his, uh, his right, that right. Clinton, the intelligence. They're going to get the intelligence briefings. That's when things are gonna. I, it's gonna be. An, it's gonna be a major pivot for him because he's gonna start going like, "Oh, okay," and he's gonna sound like every other Republican. He's gonna sound like every other Republican. I don't know, know, man. Telling you, <laughs> except you know, he's gonna be just unhinged on that. And I, I have a feeling that I, I, I would bet a little bit of money, not all my money, but maybe a couple bucks. That he might leak some some top secret information out <laughs> yeah. during the debate because yeah. he's so unhinged. But um, yeah. Yeah, uh, but there is one silver lining. Fuck Gary Johnson, and I'm gonna get into Gary Johnson just a little bit because we oh, have God, we, yeah. we got a little bit of time. Uh, yeah, but Gary Johnson getting five percent is important. Can we admit that that him just getting five percent? He's gonna get probably about like nine. I, I'm guessing that's kind of like the median 
of all these polls is somewhere in between. I don't know. Was Ross Perot important? <laughs> yes, because the Reform Party was a minor party for one cycle. And they were getting federal, well, they were eligible for funding. I don't know if they actually took it. But the, the Libertarian Party, if, if they get this, if they get 5%, they're eligible for federal funding up to uh, federal funding. And mm-hmm. I have been talking to, after, after this whole Gary Johnson thing, it was like, okay, it was mostly the James Weeks thing. James Weeks had this thing. He was on, he was the one that got naked, or not naked, but in this man thong yeah, at okay. the convention. Um, he had did this interview on the Seeds of Liberty podcast, um, good podcast, by the way, where he was talking about how the reason why he got involved in it. And he was he said, like, if any group is going to call themselves libertarian, I need to actually represent real libertarianism in that party. And I was like, that's fucking brilliant, because I'm kind of getting tired of like, well, they already kicked out all the neocons. And now they're kind of having the, you know, the blue state Republicans that are hanging around, um, you know, like Johnson and Will. That those are a little bit better than the neocons, but uh, if if they're gonna be if if they're gonna be there representing libertarianism, I think I should actually have a say of what libertarianism is in the libertarian party, quote unquote. Right. And so I'm like, okay, so I'm kind of interested, and then you know some some ideas like, oh, maybe we should. I'm thinking about actually running for mayor of Las Vegas, and I'm seriously considering it, not to win, but just to have a fun campaign. And in order for me to have a fun campaign, uh, there's got to be some money thrown around. I could actually, mm-hmm. if, if Gary Johnson gets 5%, which he's going to do probably, if he gets 5% of the vote, that's going to be a lot of money for me to play with at running for, for, for mayor. Not because I'm going to eat fancy dinners and live in a nice house, but it was more, it's more along the lines of like, I get to have fun ads play on TV in Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, like taxation is theft. Jim Jesus, vote hard. <laughs> yeah. 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 The thing is like, I, 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 I see that. And if, if some good comes out of uh, Johnson's campaign, like I'm not going to begrudge them that I am just so absolutely cynical when it comes to politics. I am too. too. And I don't, and I think that I am too. (laughs) I, I, it's like with, with political strategy and political victory, I like in the long run, I think that a lot of this stuff is, pointless for the for libertarianism like yeah, it, okay. it doesn't do anything there's there are other margins where we can make a lot where we can make a lot more progress like but, selling jam out of your garage for, for exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly by the way secular I mean, numinist deleted this his is channel. how we win <laughs> yeah by the way secular numinist deleted his channel i don't know if you noticed that i'm a i'm oh, infuriated <laughs> i mean just as infuriated as i did when you deleted most of your videos but go ahead Oh man, that's that is that does anger me. <laughs> now you know um, how it feels. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, <coughs> yeah, but I mean, at the same time, it's just like I can't, I, I cannot say anything positive about Bill Weld and Gary Johnson. <laughs> Johnson is just like, oh, look at me! Like he's so terrible. <laughs> doesn't even have eyebrows. Weld is a fucking prosecutor or was a prosecutor. Sorry, enemy of mankind. All the stuff they're saying about Clinton and uh, Obama. Oh, Clinton's, Clinton's a wonderful Steve's woman. Been, I worked with her yeah, back in the day. She's a wonderful person. Wonderful. She's a psychopath. Yeah. She's a fucking murderer. Like a psych, literal psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> when when, when uh, Gaddafi got killed, when they, when they pulled him out of that pipe and then raped him and beat him to death in the street and she saw the video of that, the next day, she was on TV laughing about it in an interview. She is like, that's a psychopath or a sociopath, whatever you want to call it. That That is not a nice woman. That is not a good woman. That is a terrifying piece of shit that you should take every opportunity to denounce <laughs> and distance yourself from. Like, it, she, oh, God, just terrible. Just, they're both just so terrible. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but um <sighs> but is it well. is it worse than <laughs> is it worse than uh than Wayne Allen Root and Bob Barr? <laughs> I didn't even pay attention to them at the time, so I don't even like I know everybody hates Bob Barr. I have no idea why. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. If you thought Gary Johnson and Bill Weld are terrible, holy shit <laughs> they are fucking ron paul or fu- they're they're like tom woods in comparison they really are oh my god <laughs> the, okay. 
<laughs> God damn it. Okay. Uh. <laughs> why, why would why would the Libertarian Party be getting money be any anything any good at all? Okay. Because they keep getting people like this. They're, the Libertarian Party has been a joke since it started. They yeah. have always been terrible. They have not. They are so worthless. <laughs> Just look okay. at them. They're so worthless. No, no, no. I'm going to disagree with you. I'm going to totally disagree with you on this. You can go ahead and okay. be wrong as, Here's as the thing. much as you want. If you, the, if you, the LP is garbage. If, if you understand what the Libertarian Party was originally founded to do, it had nothing to do with getting people elected. That was that was just like, oh, maybe we'll get someone elected. What it really was, when Gary Nolan invented it, he said, like, look, the whole point is, Here's a platform where we can get this information out to people. We can like we can have candidates run and they're going to have to get, you know, they're going to have to participate in the system and they have to get coverage and all this other stuff just like yeah, any but other person. Yeah, they have to be libertarians right. for that to have any positive effect. Yes. Here's here's where I'm, I'm getting to that. Hold on, <laughs> I'm getting to that. Hold on, I'm you're making they're so incompetent you're, though. Like, how can you expect them to like you? You're like, oh, they're gonna get money. Yeah, how because are they gonna because your ass constantly? needs to be your ass needs to be there and say, hey, Austin Peterson's a fuck ass. Okay, Gary no, Johnson is I'm a not, fucking moron. Someone needs I don't to be want to there. Talk at, to these people, though. <laughs> <laughs> but that's why I'm. Look, you know me. I love I love fucking with quote unquote libertarians. <laughs> you know that that's my bread and butter. Like, oh, libertarians that are wrong. Don't worry, I have oh, this. God, no. <laughs> oh man, the LP. So, uh, so I bad. I am doing the dirty work. Okay, I've done the dirty work with the with the zeitgeist movement. I've done the dirty work for Molyneux. Uh, trust me, I have this. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've met some LP people here in New York too, and uh, the, the LP, the bad. LP in New York are probably a little bit better because you, uh, you have no. Alex Merced running for. We should talk about well, Alex that's true, Merced. That's true. How's your buddy Alex, by the way? Uh, I don't know. I haven't <laughs> talked to him in years. Uh, really? I yeah. Last time I talked to him, the only time I actually really met him was when I was uh, volunteering for the Sea Study Institute. I think it was 2012. Uh, we went to the Students for Liberty conference. Um, but yeah, he's. I mean, he's running for stuff, uh, and he is a libertarian. He does. Yeah, yeah. He, he is a real libertarian. He's a real libertarian. Uh, I disagree with basically all of his his strategy stuff and some of his positions. But I mean, like he's like he completely gets it. He's not. Yeah, <laughs> he's yeah, not yeah. Gary Johnson or Bill Weld. <laughs> like, but there um, is a question that that has been plaguing me and my friend. You'll meet him in the Discord chat, by the way. Um, mm -hmm. When you met him, did he say, hi, I'm Alex Merced from AlexMerced.com? Did he say that? Uh, no. Or, uh, because that... <laughs> but I, I heard the story you know what I'm time from separate people, yes, that he said that. <laughs> I had unsubscribed from him. He, he doesn't produce... Like, his podcast, like, I've listened to it. It's not bad. But his YouTube mm -hmm. channel was, like, constantly, like, eight times a day. There was another it video, was eight videos a day. Yeah. It was a lot. Hi, I'm Alex <laughs> Merced from alexmerced.com, and today we're going to talk about Austrian business cycle. Okay, so, and then explain the <laughs> That was a very and good then, impression. <laughs> and then they go, okay, so this has been Alex Merced from alexmerced.com, and thank you very much. And then <laughs> the next video, yeah. same day. <laughs> like, there's like yeah. eight of these videos. I'm like, <laughs> I can't deal with this. Like, like I go and check my subscription. It's like Alex Merced, Alex Merced, Alex Merced, Alex Merced. Like, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> and it, it's good stuff but it's just i can't i i got i want to see other things besides alex merced from alex merced.com okay so <laughs> like i'm i don't know i like alex merced <laughs> at the same time i hate him <laughs> 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 nothing wrong with the guy but uh anyways yeah i forgot where i was going with this oh yeah so alex merced yeah he, you know he's running um you know there, there's this is good. Bill uh, Will Coley is going to be running for president, from what I understand. Next, next, next election, which is, that should be fun. <laughs> Will Will Coley? He's the uh, he's the guy that ran. <laughs> he's the, he's the Muslim redneck who ran as the vice president for Bear, uh, for the guy who living in the van, Daryl W. Perry. It was it was the guy <laughs> living in a van and Muslim redneck twenty sixteen. <laughs> that was the meme that was going around about them. 
<laughs> but I actually met him at Freedom Fest. And we were like hanging out the most most of the time. He's a really cool guy. But he's gonna be running, and he's he's a Muslim <laughs> from Tennessee, yeah. an actual <laughs> redneck. And he was actually sitting there talking about like, oh, the 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 moonshine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the economy. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, you're actually a redneck? <laughs> like, this wasn't just hyperbole? And he was like, oh, no, no, I really am. I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is going to be fantastic. How do I volunteer for your campaign? Oh <laughs> I need this in my life. So, oh, my God. This is, uh, don't, don't date. <laughs> don't date. This is great. <laughs> Sign me up. Oh, man. So, yeah, no. like, but I'm kind of on the James Weeks position. Is There's, there's going to be a group going around publicly on mass media saying that they're libertarians. I'm going to try to be there and say, no, 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 no. This is libertarianism. That's something else <laughs> close, but no cigar. <laughs> I'm going to be, yeah, a, not in a man oh, thong, God. but pretty close. <laughs> Maybe in a man thong. <laughs> if she gets hairy, you know, uh, if, they, <laughs> if they get to the Bob bar, it's tempting. We'll see. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just I, I can't fucking pull my I can't bring myself to involve myself in the political process at all. It's just it's like nothing sounds worse to me. Nothing sounds worse to me. <laughs> Not even for fun. Like you wouldn't run a joke campaign, a pseudo Trump no. campaign. Oh, no, man. No, <laughs> I don't want attention. <laughs> That's, uh I don't either, but for some reason it does sound fun to run for the mayor. Of, and if I, it's possible that oh, actually, this is Vegas, I, there, I could there win. Is a, there is there is one guy in New York uh, that I know that's that's run for a bunch of stuff in the LP uh, who is awesome, and his name is Jim Lezinski. And uh, way back when, in like two thousand three or two thousand four, there was this Daily Show segment with ed helms that was literally like my favorite daily show segment of all time it was one of my favorite things to have ever seen on television i was in high school and it was about uh this uh new york libertarian who uh was doing a toy drive for kids and at the time the city was trying to ban toy guns and so he <laughs> jim created this uh toy drive called guns for tots where they were, <laughs> where they were doing getting toy guns to give to kids and he was doing it like all over the city but he was also they they filmed a, a segment where uh he was in harlem and <laughs> people were not happy <laughs> <laughs> and the thing was, when I moved to New York, I met this guy and I didn't realize it was him until like two or three years later, someone mentioned guns for tots and it clicked and like I lost my shit. And like <laughs> I was messaging him. I was like, oh, my God, you're this guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> was that when Jim's, uh, John Stewart was on or was it with the other guy? What yeah, yeah, it was with the, it was okay. with John Stewart. Um, I think it was like right around the time that Steve Carell was leaving. Um, oh, okay. But uh, I'm still in high school. It, okay, anyways. Yeah, yeah, it was a long time ago. Um, okay. Young and yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, he's he's hilarious, and he has run consistent libertarian campaigns where he was like, I think, running for comptroller, and his platform was, "I'm going to fire everybody and, <laughs> and abolish the comptroller." <laughs> like, his literal. It was his platform was like, "On my first day of office, I will fire everybody." and shut down the office because it's an enormous waste of money. <laughs> like, uh, so there, there, you're right. There are some good LP people out here, but I've also met some not great LP people. And, uh, and I just have no faith in anyone who's attracted to politics. So <laughs> well, last I instantly suspect. <laughs> well, last I checked, Jim Babb is actually going to be right. I, I, he ran it for it before, and it'll, I know he'll do it again. But he was talking about he was going to run for treasury of Philadelphia or the, either the state, Philadelphia, state, Pennsylvania, whatever. Mm -hmm. He's going to run for the treasurer. And his whole platform is I'm going to change the locks and change the passwords on the computers. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's campaigns like that. Like, I've, in any okay, case, so 
from what I understand, I'm not too sure about this, but one of the other people that hang out with the, um, you have a hop event in <laughs> bar event, right? Yes. Which has kind of do, been yeah. dead for a while, but hop ours hour. is active. <laughs> ours is, oh, so you have the hop, what is it called? Uh, Hans Hermann Hoppe hour. Okay. So you have the Hans Hermann Hoppe, oh, high time preference hour. High, high time preference Hoppe hour. See, yeah. I know it's not really regular it. anymore. Yeah. <laughs> ours is regular, which is the Hans Hermann Hoppy as in like hoppy beer, uh, hands yeah. and hoppy sobriety removal service, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> and that's at aces, the nails, Tanea, uh, third Friday of every, every month, uh, six 30 PM. Mm-hmm. And, uh, never fails. Anyways. Um, enough of the shameless plugging, but one of the people that hang out there was telling me like, Oh, the, like the current mayor of, of, uh, of, of Las Vegas, uh, is the wife of the guy who was previously the mayor and the previous mayor who he still does this, but he just hangs out with his wife when he does it. Uh, can't, can't run for, for mayor anymore because his term limits. But what he mm-hmm. would used to do is all he would do as mayor was show up with a couple of showgirls under his arms and a martini in his hand. That was it. <laughs> That's all he did. And anytime everyone asked him like, Hey, you know, like how come we like won't get this passed or like there's some some city budgeting, you know, like we need some more money for schools. And he's like, hey, I'm the mayor. And as the mayor, I have no real powers. The only thing I could really do is hang out with these showgirls and drink this martini. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and I'm like, if he can win, I can win on the campaign of I'm going to turn the D into a pro- into a brothel. I can do this. <laughs> right, right, right. I can turn, I can turn the Fremont experience into a brothel. I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really considering that. If, so if the Libertarian Party doesn't have an actual candidate to run as mayor, I'm going to do it. Uh, if they do, then I'm going to run for city council, and I'm going to kind of do the same thing. But there's going to be signs all over Vegas either way saying Jesus vote hard. <laughs> like, that's all. I, that's all. I. That's all I want to do at the end of the day is just have people drive around saying like, "Why are there signs saying Jesus vote hard?" <laughs> like, and then going to the ballot box and seeing a guy named Jim Jesus Alexander. Like, oh god. <laughs> like, how could you that not would be, vote that, for Jesus? That would be incredible. Okay. So, so. Okay. And then he, what's his main platform? He wants to turn the D into a brothel. And if, if I run for city council, it's going to be one of the one of the ones in my ward. So it's probably Texas station. Texas station is mm-hmm. good for brothel or fiesta. <clears throat> yeah. I, f- I think fiesta would be good. I'll have to work this out, but it's not going to be till 2019 anyway. So that's right. Bad. So, uh, you gotta lay the groundwork now, start getting the grassroots going. <laughs> <laughs> We're working on that. I actually have to have a meeting with the, um, well, I think I'm going to release this tomorrow or later tonight. So I'd be by, probably by today, by the time you listen to it, uh, with the head guy from the Libertarian Party in Nevada. So Brett Pajunas, Pajunas, I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's a cool guy, though. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have a meeting with him and we're going to do a We're going to start a Libertarian caucus, by the way, but it's going to be for Nevadans only. And then we're going to expand just doing like guerrilla media stuff. Like I want to go to a Hillary can like rally and get her to sign my copy of uh, the DVD of you got mail or something like that. Like <laughs> just, just shit like that. Like that's what we yeah, want to do. Like, just really kind of like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just media seeking. So is there anything else? Oh, by, by the way, if you don't, are you done? Are you done? I'm done? Yeah. Okay. So I think this might be the last YouTube version of the podcast. Um, okay. I'm just fucking tired of having to render that hour long fucking MP3. Yeah, it's horseshit. Yeah. Uh, so I'm. What I'm uh, this is going to be my probably my last one, depending on it, because I don't know. I haven't rendered a long video on this thing yet because it's a brand new computer, and it's actually better than my 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 desktop. Mm-hmm. So if it takes forever, yeah, it's going to be the last one, and I'm just going to upload like a 10 minute starting segment and then say, hey. If you want to listen to the rest of the show, yeah. click here. Yeah, that's probably a good, better idea anyway. Yeah, because I'm sorry, I can't stand videos on YouTube. And like, oh, we're a podcast, and I'm kind of yeah. contributing to that, even though this is an actual podcast on an RSS feed that downloads audio. Yeah, but it contributes to that. Like, oh, if I have a YouTube channel, that's a podcast. <laughs> no, it's not. That's no, it's not. I know. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you got anything to plug? No, nothing. Right um, no new movies you're making. Nothing. Nothing at the moment. No, I'm just uh, <laughs> just my resume, maybe, <laughs> but I'm trying to get a job. So, <laughs> well, best of luck. 
Um, yeah, thank you. Let me you. link you to resume. <laughs> Post your yeah, link. I'll, I'll put my LinkedIn on there. <laughs> or hashtag please, please donate. donate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you do live in New York. You need money, so. All right. Yeah. Yeah, good talking to you again. Right. Do more. Or make more videos. Oh, okay. I'll make more videos. Broken microphone. I'm going to make more videos for you. Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the Bipcot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lone Birds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this can be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal actions from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango.org.